Hello, everyone, and welcome to ISCA's Art Innovation Talks, presentations designed to educate and inspire creativity and innovation. I'm Haley Joseph, along with the Art Innovation Talks Committee. We'd like to thank you for joining us for this live Zoom presentation, third in our AIT series. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce our moderator today, Mary Lou McDonald, who will be gathering your questions from the chat, our chat room. Thank you, Mary Lou. You're very welcome. Just to let everyone know, all of your mics have been muted. This will allow everyone to listen clearly without any potentially distracting background noise. Set your devices to speaker view if you are able. This will enhance your viewing of the presentation. To ask any questions you may have, simply go to the chat option on your device. On the iPhone, it's typically found in the upper right corner of the screen with the three dots. On an Android phone, it's on the bottom with the three dots. And if you're on a Mac or a PC, the chat is located on the bottom of the screen just below the viewing area. You may have to place your mouse in that area for it to appear. And when it does, simply click on the chat option. Type your question and hit send. I'll be collecting your questions and will present as many as I can to our speakers within our given time allowance. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mary Lou. Now on to our talk. We're very excited to have this distinguished group of very talented presenters with us today. Visual artists and fellow ISCA members, April Rimpo and Eileen Weiner-Reed, along with collaborating spoken word artist, Patty Ross. The topic of their presentation, interdisciplinary creative collaboration, where art takes flight. What's your story? That's what these artists want to know when holding their collaborative events. Although their artistic styles vary widely, both Elaine and April are motivated to tell stories of life. Elaine's abstract work is a is expressionistic and honors the resilience of the human spirit. April's work depicts everyday life in a way to focus her emotional response to any given scene. The joy of hearing how their paintings sound to others is what brings these artists together to collaborate. Patty Ross, author, spoken word artist, Little Pie. She is a 2021 Pushcart Prize nominee for her poem, Indemnity. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I would like to start by introducing April Rimpo, give you a little more bio before she begins to, to speak. April Rimpo uses color and light to stories of life. Color is used to set her emotional response to the subject be it person, a landscape, or an urban scene. She uses a variety of water media shifting from year to year. How much she uses watercolor, fluid acrylics, or combinations of acrylics and mediums. Her goal is for others to recall their own stories, so she abstracts portions of the painting to allow the viewer to insert their own vision and, and ideas. April feels a piece is successful when the mood she wanted is achieved and the story shine through. Real success comes, however, when others tell her the story they see in her paintings. April is a signature artist in seven watercolor societies, one acrylic painter society, and the International Society of Experimental Artists. Her work is published in three best of books and one best in watercolor magazines. Welcome, April. Thank you, Elaine. Welcome. I'm so uh, delighted to, that we had an opportunity to give our presentation today. Um, it's, um, you may have thought our, our title, What's Your Story, seemed a little bit odd, because aren't we supposed to be telling you our story? But what we're talking about there is when you have your art on exhibit somewhere, um, somewhere in the public, and someone comes up to you and they share with you what, what that painting means to them, 
you know, they provide a little bit of their personal connection with your piece of art. Um, for Elaine and I, there is nothing better. Um, and so what we want to do is explain to you what we've done in order to foster hearing more from others on what they think when they see our pieces. And so when we hold exhibits together, we have included with um, the opening reception, closing reception, we also include other ekphrastic events. And ekphrastic is a literary term that Patty will um, explain a little more later, but we have stretched that term. So we're no longer using it only to refer to literature, but also to music. And you know, if we were able to pull in dancers, we'd bring in dancers. Um, so we hold these events so that we can hear what those other artists feel when they look at our work. And so I'm going to share with you here in a minute a video that um, I created um, based on four interpretations of one of my paintings. Um, the painting is called Incense. And what we're going to hear are two poets and two sets of musicians. So let me uh, get it started. The very first thing when the video starts, you're gonna hear a little bit of music going on in the background and that is the beginning of Rogue Collective's piece that they wrote um, to, this, um, to this painting. jumped out at me. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you are spreading incense and doing stuff. I have, and I really appreciate this one. Um, inhale the smoke and remember the clean desert mint of sage, the earthy lift of copal, fill the air around my head, cleansing my soul, my home. Inhale the smoke and remember, I swing the incense like my ancestors, like churchmen and pagan priestesses for centuries, making the world holy. Inhale the smoke and remember, we are spirit in the flesh. I purify this place, chase out what isn't welcome. I'm a wise woman at work, breathe the smoke and remember. Reminded me very much of a uh, priest or bishop swinging a uh, censer with incense in it. And when I researched the painting, I found out why it reminded me of that. <laughs> <laughs> because it is that. <laughs> you can't get anything past me. A well known tune of uh, Ave Maria, which is actually used a lot around this time of year for uh, Christmas. <laughs> And look 
walking through all these pieces of her life, I came across. I'm just going to move this out a little bit further to where she starts to read. Guess what? It's for the incense painting. I think that's the favorite painting, but night. And this was written in 2005. And it's called Like Smoke Through My Fingers. Your face, features once familiar, slipping away. Off into the darkness of time, my child who I thought I would never forget, gone. Lost to the passing years. Memories, feelings of happiness, sadness, joy. Delve deeper into the dark recess of memory. Nothing. Memories like smoke through my fingers. Questions. Who are you? Who am I? fall into the hands of a stranger. So I hope from this you get a real sense of the huge variety of interpretations um, that you too could achieve um, if you decide to do an event like this. Um, now, this whole initiative um, was started by Elaine and I would like to have introduce Elaine so she can come and she can talk about how did every painting as a song get started. So Elaine Weiner's read, Weiner reads, professional art qualifications include juror, lecturer, blogger, committee member, and instructor. Elaine earned signature and life artist memberships in three watercolor societies and is a signature member of ISEA. She wrote, illustrated, and published three children's books that are available on Amazon. Her art has been included in international exhibitions, China, Hong Kong, Italy, India, Spain, France, Poland, Canada, and in over 60 international and national exhibitions held in the US. She's also been with a solo group shows in Chelsea and Hell's Kitchen. Her art is in public, private, corporate and museum collections in the US and in Europe. Elaine creates abstract assemblages in form, color, and line. She sees beauty in humans as they are, each one a unique and multifaceted three-dimensional tableau. Elaine lets the form and placement of figures imply subsurface context and emotion. Monuments to life, her works, resurrect feelings of transcendence, mystery, and hope. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you, April, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. My, the genesis of this idea, Every Painting is a Song, began sometime in between 2014 and 2016, when I had a my first solo show in many years. I had in 2014, experienced some family loss. And then I went to Poland where I was with an international residency, a group of some 30 to 50 artists on any given day from at least 16 countries. And art became our way of communicating across language and cultural differences. It was the first time we had met people from many of these cultures. And I was in the first contingent of American artists at the time. So, it was a responsibility to me. Essentially, when we, we do that, when we go anywhere, we're a diplomat for our country and our people and our cause. And watching them, seeing what motivated them, trying to speak between three and four languages, it was great. Um, started this idea within me that it's about more than just showing our work. So when I had the solo show coming up in 2016, I started thinking that I wanted to turn this soliloquy that is our art, right? We all create in our own little worlds and realms. 
I wanted to turn it from soliloquy to dialogue. I was tired of only hearing my own voice and I was tired of art shows just being this venue for accolades or recognition of our accomplishments or achievements. Um, I wanted more, I wanted interaction. I truly wanted to hear what other people thought. And I don't think they believed it. So it took a few years until people knew that I really wanna hear them and I want to promote and, and collaborate with them and share their work um, because there's some amazing people I've gotten to meet. So in 2016, I thought, well, how do I do this? Um, it was um, a small venue, but I had this room to myself, a gallery, and I put words, I wrote written reflections and I put them next to each of the pieces in the room. And I saw something amazing happen because instead of people just circling and going to the food table or circling to tell you how great it was, congratulations, or ask how you got this show, they looked and they thought and they started to walk by and then they read the words and they stayed on a painting longer and they shared their thoughts and feelings and memories later. So I thought I'm on to something. Um, I had a blog at the time as well and I tried through some of my own works to get others to contribute and pub, you know, share poems that I could then promote. I got a, I chose a new website. So it's kind of kludgy if you go in, but I chose it because it's a muse uh, musician's website. And I knew I wanted audio reflections, both my own as well as other people's. I didn't know where it could lead, but this every painting is a song. I thought it's a song and it's a story. And hey, April, and we'll get to that later, helped us express the idea better. So 2017, I had another solo show, another test bed. I took it further. Um, and I wanna say that the responsibility and role of an artist means honoring the staff and the venues and the communities you're in as well. So work with them. They, they become friends, they become supporters and they can help guide guests through your exhibit. They do all kinds of things on the front and back end. So they're invaluable to know your venue. Um, so at this one, they, they let me have at it. It was another intimate space. I had a screen playing my video, Masks and Mirrors, and I had the gallery talk. And I also had a mirror because um, identity is at the heart of my, my work. So Masks and Mirrors, what we conceal and reveal. Um, both the defense mechanisms when we put that mask on to protect ourselves, but also the personas we, and roles, different roles in life we have from parents to working in an office to artist. So I had one mirror there, that's all the, there was really room for. And I had masks as well, both ones I had purchased and I had some play masks that was just before Halloween. And I had masks that the people could take home to have their children color. So we shared stories. There were the words. I now have the audio reflections on my website as well. And then in 2018, it was, I got another solo show opportunity and it was the most extraordinary gallery space I've ever had. So they asked me which one I wanted. And I said, well, I'll pick the big one. I've never had a thousand square feet. But then the weight of it falls on us as all, all of you know, who've had shows. I have to entertain people in this space. I have to honor their faith in me um, and put on a good show and be there to honor the people too as they walk through. So I had placards laminated next to all of the paintings. So I had the visual um, for people to read as they went through. I had audio gallery talks on my website to in introduce it. A friend of mine said, well, you have your idea in mind for what this show is. It's a walk through life, but you might want to let others know and you're kind of the uh, eureka moment. So I started just putting more work in. So the thing to know is that these collaborations take a lot of work and planning, months to a year. So um, at this one, it was the gallery director who she loved the idea, every painting is a song and she knew musicians. So that's how I got to meet this wonderful trio of talented musicians, Rogue Collective, two violinists and a cellist, and they're extraordinary. So at an event, two hour event, they played live inspired by my pieces. I'd shared images with them. 
they chose a few they wanted to play to and they kept moving about the the two room space talking and interacting with the guests and explaining how they were trying to bring classical music into the modern age to show that it was still relevant as well. So on my YouTube channel, you can hear many of their pieces. Um, April and I both try to make videos afterwards and audio recordings. And on my website, I have audio recordings and still have a lot of work to do on that. So um, before we get to 2019, when April and I had our first collaboration, I'd like to share a little bit of this collaboration. So I'll share my screen now, wish me luck. So if you can hear me or how does my artwork sound to you? And I truly want to know, I want that puts more life into my art. And as I'll show you, if this will work, that was a question, you know, as the concept was building. So it's now in its seventh year. The unexpected rewards are that we inspire each other. So this visual acoustics, this welded metal, started in 2018 after I met Caitlin and Alexandra and Natalie, the, the three musicians. This music you're hearing is their response to my painting that April showed at the beginning with me sitting on the floor in front of it, um, Stop Injustice. This is their work, Telemetry. This is the three of them playing in 2019 to my piece, Challenge Accepted. extraordinary <laughs> so, and this um, is a dear friend of mine uh, Jerry Ingley who in 2019 um, wrote a song lyrics and sang to one of my paintings this one Chance Encounters and April's and this painting me meant a lot to me uh, because Rogue Collective the year before had created a musical piece to it all three of them and um, this is a painting of my son when we were in Ireland. And the first time I'd put him in a painting since he was a baby. So please listen to my very amateur recording of Jerry surprising me in Rehoboth, playing it live when he had a music gig at a restaurant. <laughs> And finally, the last piece, Stop Injustice, of a little bit of a, a poem by Carrie Martindale, who's an extraordinary talented woman. This is her painting. E-N-T-A-A care. John Tucker. Well, here you go. But these tears aren't fear of a black man on my street. I'm not crying because I'm lying about him flirting with me. I'm crying because black America is dying and so are those who kneel alongside them. Whiteness is the disease and it's a gene we all carry. And this miscarriage of justice was carried out just as the law intended to silence those of us who fight this institution because revolution makes us the enemy of whiteness. So that's some of the amazing things that can happen when you collaborate. Um, so if you can think about what your motivation is, what your roles, what you hope to achieve, and then please remember that it's about relationship building as well. And um, I think we're better for it. So thank you. April, do you want me to start with 2019? <laughs> yes. 
Thank you. So 2019, um, so I think it was sometime in 2018 that April reached out to me and said, I like this idea. I care about hearing what people think as well. Um, do you want to do a show together? And I thought, yay, because probably 20 years before that, uh, April and I had met in a workshop and I said, I'd love to do a show with you sometime. So it's just wonderful how these relationships we build are with us forever. So in 2019, um, April had the venue and we had both spaces in this um, community center. And we had eight months to plan it, which is optimal. April and I are planners and we know we're thorough. We, we want to cover all bases. We want to explore all options and we want to put on the best event we possibly can. Um, April is a fantastic partner. And I think we both knew that we were not gonna let each other down. So that becomes that roles and responsibilities again to each other, as well as the venue, to you, the people you meet and collaborate with. So we said, okay, let's divide and conquer. I was gonna reach out to my friend, Jerry, who is a musician. Um, he, as far as I knew, never wrote to anything other than his own to internal inspirations and vision. And so I reached out to him kind of like a cold call and emailed and said, do you ever write inspired by other people's images as an example? So, um, and I had not heard his original songs in years. He used to write them and still did all through the eighties. So we reconnected and I reached out to Rogue Collective as well. And they, they just blew us away. Rogue Collective, it was again before COVID. So um, in some of the videos you'll see on both of our playlists, we had a crowd of people. It was amazing. Um, we had to rent the space, but it wasn't a ton. you know. Um, so when we wanted these other events, other than the opening and closing reception, we paid to rent the space because of course the venues need to have staff people with them. We, um, we reached out to poets and musicians. So April took the lead on the literary end and I took the musicians. And April went to an open mic and that's where she, uh, we are blessed that she met Patty Ross and some of the other poets that we met there and that's, um, that read to and created works to our paintings. We realized we wanted permissions because we were gonna video tape this. So we emailed permissions to get permission to see who would allow us to put them in video or have recordings of them. And um, we just kept our staff involved. We also, I, April, I remember the other day, we invited one of our friends or we begged her to please help people sign the guest book. So our artist friend, Benita, also stood in and helped. So um, it really does take a village and it was an extraordinary set of events um, that we, when we were ending, we were exhausted, but we said, oh, I hope we get to do this again. So now April, on to 2021, thanks. Yes, and so in 2021, you know, we had learned a lot from our first experience, um, but in this case, we only had three months to get ready. Three months is not much when uh, you're dealing with two people who like to plan. Now it was a venue that we didn't, neither one of us knew, neither one of us had ever had a show at that venue. Um, it was actually a fairly, it's a fairly new venue uh, in the area for artwork. And so we met with the director because we needed her to understand what we wanted to do. And she absolutely loved the idea, um, thankfully, and allowed us um, to have as many events as, as we wanted. I mean, she was like, yeah, let, let's have an event a week, <laughs> which was more than we had intended to do. And of course we had three months, but she had so many ideas and so many contacts in the community that um, she said she could share with us. Um, so we left that meeting thinking, oh, wow, we're going to get a lot of support from this group. So let's go ahead and plan an event a week. Um, and then we discovered that they did not have very large staff at all. And so we weren't going to get all the support. And uh, the venue, it turned out also, I mean, we had seen the venue um, and we were fine with it. We were going to have three rooms. and. But they had applied for a grant for some facility improvements, um, OSHA compliance kind of things. And 
um, they got their grant. And so one of the rooms became no longer available. And we had already shared um, via Google Drive images with the poets. So Elaine and I had to quickly go through the full set of images that we thought we were using, make sure we kept the ones we'd shared with the poets and you know, figured out which ones, what are the ones we're gonna drop since we don't have this additional space anymore. So you have to be pretty agile. Um, sharing through Google Drive saved us a lot of work and it made it easier for the poets and musicians as well because then they could just go to that site as many times as they wanted um, to figure out what they wanted to use, what they were gonna write to. Um, instead of emailing people about permissions, we had permission forms. So it was more organized for us and for the people to fully understand what we had in mind. And then the very best thing was Patty Ross, who had written poetry for us in 2019 offered to organize the acrastic poetry event. And thank God she did. Um, we found out just how important it is to have someone who really knows the community and knows what to do. And so we're gonna have Patty speak to that. Um, so first, however, let me read Patty's intro. Um, Patty is a, was a graduate from high school and proceeded to college at the age of 16. After high school graduation, she performed with several local theaters companies in the Washington DC region. Um, and you can get some feel for that performance background because in addition to being a traditional poet, she is also a spoken word artist. And so for some of her pieces, she writes them from the perspective of her character, Little Pie, and she performs them as Little Pie. And it, uh, it's really a joy to hear um, the very first painting of mine that Patty wrote to, she performed as Little Pie and oh my God, it was just amazing. Now you heard in the intro that Patty last year was nominated for the Pushcart Prize. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about what that is. It's a best of small presses series that's published every year uh, starting in 1976. Um, it's one of the most honored literary projects in America. And here are a few of the accolades for the, the Pushcart Prize. It received highest honors from the American Academy of Arts and Letters. It was named the most influential project in the history of American publishing by Publishers Weekly. And it was the winner of the book critic, sorry, National Book Critics Circle Lifetime Achievement Award in 2005. Now here we are. 16 years later, it's still going strong. It's still highly valued and sought after. So our, our great friend, Patty, has been now been nominated uh, and will be in next year or this year's book, I guess. And I'd like to welcome her to come and speak about how it was from the poet's perspective. Thank you, April. Thank you, Elaine. Um, so yeah, from the poet's perspective, um, I had participated in 2019, so I had a chance to see uh, what was what was going on. I also had a good handle on uh, ephrastic uh, poetry. So ephrastic comes from the Greek word ephraxis, um, and which is essentially description. The Poetry Foundation talks about ephrastic work as um, reflecting on the action of a painting or a sculpture. And so, and in a lot of ways, in terms of my spoken word uh, work, that is what I'm doing a lot with that is, re is reacting and, and, and uh, sharing based on um, an incident or, you know, or something like that. Uh, and and in, the, in a lot of cases, um, some particular type of work or phrase or something like that. So in 2019, um, it was just varied poets and, um, and it was a very nice event. Um, but one thing that I, I wanted to see differently 
in 2021 was the, um, the, the poetry matching the, um, the distinction of the artwork. Um, April and Elaine's work is just phenomenal. And I think that it is at a level um, that, you know, is clearly, you know, worthy of the awards and accolades that they get um, and, and the international recognition um, that they have. And so I wanted to, I wanted to, to, to elevate also the poetry piece of, um, of an event. Um, if we had a chance to do it. And so when, um, when, we, when I got to this venue and I saw this venue, I was like, oh, this would be great. You know, it's plenty of space. We can, you know, we can have some spoken word stuff as well as some traditional um, poetry. And so, um, and so that was part of my um, reaching out and making the connection with them to the director to see about having a show um, at the event. Um, I have been in the poetry community for about seven or eight years, um, you know, re-entering um, from years ago. And so I had had a chance um, with the flexibility with my work to be able to see a lot of different venues, a lot of different places, a lot of different ways in which poetry was being um, now, you know, put out into the public. And so um, I really was excited because I think that uh, doing an ephrastic event is really a wonderful way to show um, the full scale of artistry, right? And so you're getting the entire, you know, we talk about, you know, whole body learning for kids or something like that. <laughs> you're getting the whole body experience uh, when you have all of the senses involved in the art, right? Um, and so, and that's what I think about with the Ephrastic event. And of course, um, both uh, both Elaine and April's work is really, really lends to being able to have that whole body experience. Um, and so um, um, when, when I, when I thought about it, I said, okay, I want to pick poets that are at that same level, and I've got to do this in an organized fashion. And I think that uh, Elaine or um, April one mentioned that, you know, last year we've done emails and this, that, and the other. Well, having everything on the Google Drive was the first step to really getting us better organized because in 2019 I think we kind of sent sent things back and forth and that'll work but honestly it was better to do it this particular way um, they were able to step out of the process I think by having me dealing with the poets and so then that was one thing that they didn't have to worry about so I did a lot of the communication with the poets um, I kept a spreadsheet so that I knew uh, which poets had picked which paintings I, um, because I had such a rapport with a lot of the poets, um, I encouraged them to pick one from each of the artists because I wanted to have a sense of balance, right? I didn't want, I mean, we have a, we have a show here in which the artists have taken time to balance out their 50, you know, paintings. And so we wanted to sort of balance that out as well. And so, um, and so, and that worked out really well because I knew the poets well enough to say, eh, nah, don't do that one, do this one, or, you know, you know, kind of give a, a little bit of, um, of assistance and guidance with that. Um, and so, and that worked out because the thing about collaboration is I do think that you have to genuinely know and have to be willing to work together with, um, with your folks because otherwise there's going to be a lot of missteps. And so in some cases, some of the, the poets were like, yeah, I don't have time to write two poems. I've got, you know, a zillion other things I'm doing. Um, and so then you had to coordinate, okay, one's written one to this one, one's written one to that one, you know, so that we still kept that, that balance. Um, the other thing I will say is that, um, uh, see, I wrote some notes here and I'm just trying to, to, to remember what I said here. So it would be, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I, I think that that's, you know, you can ask me questions about it, but I think for the most part, um, the biggest thing I can say is that when you're collaborating or as my friend says, cross-pollinating, <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing that, it's really important to have a good um, working relationship with your collaborators. Um, and I also think if you're going to bring um, literature into the um, event, then you need to have someone too that also has relationships among 
different types of literature, right? So you have your traditional poetry, you have your slam poetry, you have your spoken word, you have your performance, um, you know. And so in in doing that, and then you and then you kind of have these these sort of um, uh, uh, poets that are um, um, uh, multimedia. Uh, uh, poets, right, who are going to put both poetry and music together. Uh, one of our poets is a harmonic a harmonicist, and so he plays the harmonica along with his poetry. So we were able to bring that in. So I think we were able to do a lot of different things with that show, and it was quite a success. Um, uh, I think that's about it. I think we're going to come back at some point and sort of do some some wrap up. So I'll I'll share some more at that time. You're going to read a piece. Okay, so yeah, I was trying to figure out if we were gonna do that. Okay, thanks. So just to give you an example of what could happen at a Frastic Show, this particular piece is um, Elaine's piece. It's called The Summer of My Content. Um, and it's from her series, Women in Focus. And the interesting thing about this piece is I had not known the title. And when I looked at the piece, I, uh, I called it Focus. And so it was kind of interesting. I think when you hear the wording, you'll, you'll also get um, a better understanding. Um, I dedicate this poem to Lucille Clifton, who is out of Baltimore, who, is, uh, who was the poet laureate for uh, the state of Maryland uh, between 79 and 83. And she has two poems. One is called Homage to My Hips and the other one is Won't You Celebrate With Me. And when I looked at this particular piece, I just saw both of those poems immediately came to my mind and thinking of them. And so then I just wrote, uh, wrote my own. Um, and again, this particular poem is called Focus. I sling my purse across my body. It rests in the middle of my hips. Hips that walk from darkness, hips that close doors, hips that laugh at insults <laughs> and spit them on the floor, laden with dirt from past existence. I celebrate my hips, thankful they guide me, thankful away from death, Thankful for the light of yellow, green, tangerine. Thankful, mixed up, we rose above the blue. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Well, I thought um, we should probably um, do a little bit of a kind of a recap of lessons learned that we had <clears throat> our 2019 and 2021 event um, and knowing the venue is is the point that I want to make um, we knew the first venue very well and and we were able to plan it accordingly we knew exactly what we could and couldn't do um, the second venue was a lot more um, you know, experimental in some ways, and, and it required a lot more replanning as we went along. Elaine? With that being said, you never know what's gonna happen in life. And so I think the two things I was thinking, be resilient, be best buddies with your collaborators and keep your sense of humor. <laughs> so um, at a certain point in time, you know, it's like, well, are we gonna be able to get in to hold the show? Are we gonna, and you know, everybody has the best intentions, but stuff happens. You know, the, the uh, facility was just acquired and they have to now, uh, you know, adhere to the rules. So they couldn't put off their, you know, renovations for accessibility because of us on our show. So it's this whole perspective that you're a part of the community that you're showing in and you just have to honor and respect each other. So I think, um, we learn a lot more and luckily the friendships we built have built so far doing this and hopefully moving forward are, are amazing and you know inspire us to write new pieces and just to keep getting together thanks patty I how think, about you i think um i think you there's two things that um you had touched on earlier and one is that um i think 
when you go into a venue, uh, try to get to know the staff as best you can because you are going to need those people at some point to be able to do something for you. So, you know, we all have our sort of idiosyncrasies as artists, you know, we, you know, I mean, hey, we all got it, right? I mean, that's a, that's a part of it, but some, you know, just make sure that you don't allow those to take over and do anything to, you know, damage or hurt the relationship because at some point you are going to need those folks. And then my second thing that I will, uh, I will tell you that April and Elaine both did is they went to other events that were held by the 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 guild who who, who owns the venue, um, and I think that's important because and and one thing that they both did is they came to the poetry uh, open mics that I hold, and that was important because then it was putting a face to the artwork for the poets and by them sharing with us then it opened up for the poets and others to want to share and have a desire to want to really do this thing and to put themselves out there and to put their words out there so i i would say that those are the two uh the two big things um that uh that i would i would be sure to do yeah, and, and I know that um, we want to get on to the Q&A, but um, I'll just tell you without us um, reading any of them to you, the feedback that we got, um, especially from the various poets, was just amazing that, um, you know, they loved the event as much as we did, and uh, it, it was really quite amazing roller coaster um, on both evenings, the original poetry event and in the closing event. Yeah, but I think that that came from you all extending yourselves too though, because you know, poets are used to just having their words on the page and they don't really want to, these, these guys came out and oh, and just so the group understands, uh, I invited um, 10 poets to participate. We had 11 <laughs> and we actually had 10 show up. So that tells you what was going on. And again, with both uh, April and Elaine coming to our various poetry events, not just the poetry events, but there was author events that they went to. Um, by doing that, they really established that they wanted to collaborate and work with the literary community. And I think that was a big plus. I mean, they don't even need me for the next one. <laughs> yeah, we do. But I, I do want to say too, I had not written poetry in some years, you know, I used to write a lot. And going to these events, it just unlocked it in me again. So I've been writing and I'm planning on going to the next open mic. But, but it was, I thought it was important for me to go there and read out loud because I hadn't done that really since college and certainly not my inner thoughts. So even though as artists, we expose all our artwork, which their measures and, and pieces of our soul. It wasn't the same thing. And I thought, I have got to do this. I've got to show them that I'm vulnerable too, that if we're sharing our innermost things. So um, it was terrifying. I'm sure my hand was shaking on the mic. Um, but I think it's just so enriching and invigorating to be with other creatives um, and different disciplines. The, the spoken word, you all amaze me. So <laughs> thanks. So Mary Lou, any questions? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you ladies for the fabulous presentation. It was very informative, very thought provoking. It got me thinking, hmm, all these talented people I know, which musicians would I pick? Which uh, written word, uh, like, you know, people would be able to help me out if I ever chose to, uh, to try that out. So uh, thank you so much for that. Um, Okay, I'll go to the questions and see what we have here. Um, the first one say, asks, when is your next show? And uh, <laughs> that she loves the energy of, at these events. And I agree. Yeah, well, I have a solo show coming up, but I think we need probably a break between doing these a little bit. But I do have a solo show coming up myself in um, June and July of this year and I'll hopefully have an acrostic event at that. So I have a, a date set with Patty to see what we can do about that in a new venue. So I wanna to talk to, to all of those folks first and see what we can do. That's awesome. 
Yeah, and, um, probably the every two year uh, for Elaine and I to do the joint ones is probably about about <laughs> right. But because we also need to apply to the venues and get one that's large enough to support both of our work and everything we want to do. So. <laughs> and um, just so you all know, we invaded an art uh, festival and now the art festival shall have a literary stage and we just <laughs> we, <laughs> we did uh, uh, it came about that they were having an uh, art festival and I said wait a minute what about you know literary art and I and I truly believe from seeing this show from the board seeing this show that they said wow you know they're right we won't we we need to ask add literary to the uh literacy to the uh to the show so yeah we'll be at arts and drafts uh which is a uh, festival here in maryland that they have over at the uh, brewery so thank you i have a question from mary lou that asks if you audition people first to ensure their work fits with uh with their artwork with the artwork so, so I'll answer for 2019. No, uh, we, we were uh, just grateful to get anyone to agree to go along with our crazy ideas. Um, and, you know, some of them were amazing and, you know, really awe inspiring. Some of them had never spoken publicly before and they, and they struggled with that piece. Um, whereas, you know, when Patty organized this event, she selected people who were all professionals and uh, you know knew what it was all about and and knew what was expected. <laughs> I think we kept giving them surprises as we went along <laughs> in the first group. <laughs> well, and in 2021, we met Michael, who played in in a the video April showed because they have open mic for musicians there. So we're thinking, oh, can we tap this? And we just lucked out, we were gallery sitting one day, we, we put in days during the week as well at the venue. And uh, one man introduced us to Michael Friedman and Michael actually did interview for us, which was, he did, you know, auditioned for us. And I was thinking, he could have played on recorder probably and we might we wouldn't have excluded him but he was really wonderful and he brought his percussionist that he plays in with us so it was um and uh, another friend who came to our closing reception is a musician and he said I almost jumped up at the you know they had a piano on stage by my painting I said oh my gosh you should have so next time I think when April and I do that we may just have a couple plants in the audience that we allow more people to participate yeah I, yeah I, I do think if you're going to do if you're going to do something with somebody from the literary community pick someone that you're good friends with that you know and they know what your standard is and you know what their standard is and then let that person manage that process for you because you you got enough to do with your other stuff and if you want to have you know that sort of elevated quality, you should do that. Patty was a godsend yeah. to us, that's for yes. sure. Seriously. Um, <laughs> we were having enough problems <laughs> with the positions that we were trying to line up and, um, you know, some came and went during our, our planning process. So <laughs> the three months, I think, was the biggest problem on that end. But uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, Kim is asking if you created a catalog. Uh, so yes, we actually will be doing a book and um, one of our uh, poets and myself have a small press that we've recently started and so we're going to produce the anthology and we've uh, checked with all of the poets and the uh, and our uh, artists here um, and so the anthology will have both the artwork and the poem. Um, and there's not a lot of those around, which was kind of interesting as we were doing our research for it. So we're kind of super excited because it's an opportunity for us to bring a little bit of, you know, sort of a first around. So thank you. Um, Katie's asking if uh, you have any concerns with contracts, have any concerns with contracts or legal concerns? Uh, no, well, actually, um, I've been taking a, a classes from a, um, a lawyer who works art, art um, 
related topics um, for several years now, actually. And I'm a member of, um, she, ha she has a membership where she puts on uh, discussions monthly on different topics that are related either to the literature world, uh, the visual artist world, or both. And, um, and so anytime that we have those kind of questions, we've been able to reach out to her and um, get some advice from her. And uh, she's provided templates for documents that, for example, for this um, new anthology, Patty and I will be doing image licenses um, to, to them so that they can use our images in their book. Um, now it's gonna be a fundraiser book. So we have actually, in this case, uh, waived any fee for the use of our images, but um, as are the poets, so. And that I was gonna say, that's the same thing. And most of the poets, uh, all of the poets for this, I had to hesitate for a second, I wanted to make sure, all of the poets for this event have been published, uh, if it's not their own uh, chapbook or so, but they've definitely been published um, in uh, literary magazines, um, other anthologies, things like that. So they're familiar with um, permissions, uh, permission agreements, and so we have those. Interesting. Yeah, you got to do it that way. We're also yeah. not really doing this one for um, any gain for ourselves. Um, this one we will be having go to um, local charities, any proceeds made from this publication. We want to give back to the community. That's wonderful. That's really great. Um, I have a question from Rick asking, how did you work out compensation for artists appearing at the events? <laughs> or did you? Uh, uh, <laughs> you want me to start, April? Okay, you start. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't matter which of us starts. Um, yeah, so they're, they're not making any uh, real money from, from these events that they do with us. Um, <laughs> Elaine and I have provided um, just uh, some small um, prints of our works in some cases and in other cases where people were much more intimately involved than they, they got um, maybe a small original um, from us. So we were, we were paying in art. We were not putting out any money, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, what was really um, and funny, just... and I hadn't shared with April yet, when I was going to give the um, print to Michael for playing, you know, as a thank you, he had just made a comment, you know, saying something about uh, donations accepted or something. Like, and I've got this envelope and I'm handing it. Like, oh my God, Michael, sorry, I, I'm sorry, it's not money. <laughs> and, I just, I just, and he goes, I didn't expect it, but I was really surprised when you walked up here. So um, I think everyone's doing it because we know we're going to try to cross promote each other. And that's the benefit. Um, we're all struggling artists in our own way. So um, monetary gain for many of this is not in my, you know, vocabulary at this point, but Patty, how yeah. about you? I was gonna say, and, and pretty much the same thing for the poets. I mean, I, you know, I, I have been established in the community. So a lot of these poets have been features at events and things like that, that I've done. So again, that's why I said you, you probably, you know, you want to find somebody that has some type of roots that can pull, you know, kind of incent people because, you know, some of those, some of the poets were members of my critique group. Um, some of them were folks that I've featured before where they've been compensated um, before. Some of them know that there's going to be something coming afterwards that they're going to get compensated with. So it's, you know, it, it, it all works out, you know. You've got to love that artistic fellowship, eh? Like it's just, it's so wonderful. Really, it is. And that's it for questions that I see anyways. I did have a comment from um, uh, someone that says they loved Elaine's The Summer of My Series of Women. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you, ladies. And I'm not sure who is going to take over. Maybe Haley? Yeah, I will. Thank you. OK, thank you again, ladies. That was so exciting. I love it. I'm so glad you're making a book. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. So Thank glad you were able to join us today. Yeah. Thank you.
Um, the, A the AIG committee is looking for presenters. So if you or someone you know would like to present an art related topic to our group, please contact Kimberly Gill by phone, text, or email. Her contact information is listed in the directory under Kimberly Gill. We'll also be emailing you each a survey. If you could take the time to complete it and uh, email it back to us, that would be wonderful. We value your feedback as we work to provide inspirational presentations. And mark your calendars for our next AIT presentation with Liz Walker on May 4th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. For the contact information of our presenters, please watch the upcoming slides. And artists, remember to think about our annual Innovations 2022 exhibition with intake starting shortly on March 1st through March 31st in our symposium, Pushing Boundaries Reboot. Thanks again for attending our art innovation talk. Keep creating your amazing art and have a spectacular day. Thank you.